sorting in the sense arranging something in a chronological order okay, you can also take it like this you know it could be in ascending order or it could be in a descending order so that's what i will call as the sorting only when i have the lesser number in the right part i will be swapping otherwise the no swap will happen hello everyone i welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on data structure especially on searching and sorting so yes I welcome all of you to the world of sorting. So what exactly sorting is all about, sir? So guys, in this concept class, I will try to give you the best example and I will try to simulate how exactly sorting will happen. What are you talking about, sir? We don't know anything about sorting. Could you please tell me about what exactly sorting is all about? Yes, guys, without speaking all those things, it's time for all of us to check what I have in the agenda. In the agenda, I will be discussing two types of sort that is going to be bubble sort and insertion sort. So before I discuss this, let me discuss what exactly sorting is all about. Sorting in the sense, arranging something in a chronological order. Okay, you can also take it like this, you know, it could be in ascending order or it could be in a descending order. So that's what I will call it as a sorting. But when it comes to sorting, how many different ways I can sort is what a challenge for us. So guys, why do we have more than one way? The main idea behind this is I need to reduce the time complexity. So guys, I should make it very simple and it should not take much time or it should not take much memory for sorting. So that's the reason I have multiple different types of sorting. So guys, I will be discussing one by one in detail. Let me explain the concept, how exactly the sorting is happening. Okay, in this class, I will be discussing the first two types of sorting. So this is going to be the basic uh, type of sorting is what I can also just tell you. But we have six different types of sorting. The first one that we have is bubble sort. Okay. Second one, insertion sort, selection sort, quick sort, merge sort. And the last one that we have is radix sort. So this is what we will be discussing in our class. All right, so let's check what exactly bubble sort is all about and how exactly we are trying to understand the bubble sort. Let's check that. Guys, imagine this is the different passes that I have. Before I get into this diagram, I want you all to understand what is sorting. Say for example, I have 10, 40, 50, 60 and 20. So guys, this is the input that I have in the array. So if I perform sorting, so just to give you an idea what is sorting, okay? If I perform sorting on this in an increasing order, my output will be what? So first 10 I will have, then I will have 20, then I will have 40, observe I don't have 30 here. So then I will have 50 and then I will have 60. So this is the output that I will get. I am sorting the data in the increasing order. That's what you need to observe when it comes to here. Okay, so but what is the technology or what is the technique that you are using to sort? So that is what you need to understand, right? So that is what we need to study here when it comes to the bubble sort. How exactly the elements are being sorted in the array is what we are trying to understand. So fine, observe here I have an array, okay? So in this array, I have five elements. The first element is five. The second one is one. Third one is four. And the fourth one is two. And the last one is eight. I need to sort this, okay, in the ascending order. How do I do it when it comes to the bubble sort? That's what you need to understand. So guys, I will take first to two. What is that I will take? I will take first two numbers and I will compare, okay? So which one is lesser? I will swap it there itself. So I have five and one. So which one is lesser? So one is lesser. So one will come this side, five will go that side. So that's what you need to remember. So this is the first thing that I'm trying to do in the bubble sort. Next, uh, in the next pass, okay? It will compare the next two numbers. So I, get, I have four and five. So which one is lesser will come to the left side. So four is a smaller one and four will come to this side and five will go to that side. Again, I will compare with the next two number, all right? So five and two. So which one is lesser? Two is lesser. Two will come this side. Five will go that side. Again, I will go to the next comparison. So guys, here I will check. So do I have, do I have lesser number in the left hand side? Yes, it is correct. Bigger number in the right hand side. So my condition is matching. So I don't have to swap in this particular point of time. That's what you need to observe here. 
only when I have the lesser number in the right part, I will be swapping. Otherwise, there's no swap will happen. That is the most important thing that you need to notice here. So fine. So I got uh, the array and I'll go to the next swap. Okay. That I will call it as a second pass. This is in the first pass and I'm going to the second pass. So fine. Again, uh, I will start compare with the first two. Okay. So I will check. So guys, here my condition is checking. So right side, I have the bigger number than the left side. So there should not be any pass if that is the case. Okay. There will be no swapping. There no swap will happen when you have the bigger number on the right hand side. So that's what I have here. Four I have and one in the left hand side which is lesser than the four. So fine. Moving forward to the next two numbers. I have four and two. What is that? I have four and two. So obviously two is less than four. Should I have the swap or not? Yes, you should have the swap. So I will swap the number. I'll go to the next pair now. So four and five. No swap will happen because it is perfect. Then again, I'll go to the next one. So do I have to do the swapping? No, I don't have to do the swapping. So I'll go to the third pass. So again, from the beginning. So we'll have, no, do I have the swap here? No, I don't have the swap here. Again, I'll go to the next two numbers. No swap. Again, I'll go to the next two numbers. No swap. And again, I'll go to the next two numbers. No swap. So when you don't have any swap, so you have got the swapped data in the sense you have got the result which is in the sorted order. This is how you will be checking for the bubble sort. When it comes to the bubble sort, you need to remember one thing. It will start comparing the two digits from the beginning. Whenever I have the right hand side, whenever I have the lesser number, I will try to shift or I will try to swap. So that's what you need to remember when it comes to the bubble sort. You need to remember this two numbers get swapped. Okay. So this is what you need to remember when it comes to the bubble sort. So this is going to be very, very simple and easy to remember. All right. So I'll show you the, some of the programs which will uh, help us to do the bubble sort. It's very, very simple. Guys, I'll make it very simple for all of you. So I don't have to uh, I have taken the C uh, program. You can also convert it into C++ by just adding C in and C out. Whenever I'm using the printf and scanf, you just have to use C in and C out. So that's it. So there, there is no much difference in this. All right. So observe here, I've taken the array. Okay. So where I will be storing the array elements and I have the variables like i, n and j. So i and j is for the loops, for loops and n is to specify how many number of elements that I should have in the array which I'm going to take. Okay. And I have of course temp uh, because I need to swap. So I will be using a temporary variable too. So I will tell you where exactly I'm using this. So this is the variable declaration. How many variables you have? One, two, three, four, five. So totally five variables you are going to declare. All right. So guys, if you read one program, all other programs are free, only slight modification. So learn one program perfectly. Okay. Slight modification where you need to check. I will tell you that. So fine. This part, enter the number of elements to be sorted. So you are asking the user how many numbers that you wanted to store in the array. So you will specify that and you will store it in the variable n. Okay. n stores the number of elements that you have in the array. So cool. Then after that, you are asking the user to enter the elements to the array and then you are storing that in the array. Okay. So Obviously, I have to use the for loop because I am not storing only one element. So I have to store n number of elements. That's why observe here. This statement will be executed n number of times. That's what you need to observe. All right. So I'm storing multiple elements into the array. What is the name of the array? A is the name of the array. All right. So fine. So this part is helping me to store the elements inside the array. So cool. Then after that. So guys, this is very, very important when it comes to the bubble sort. So this part you need to take a little care. Most of the program. So you need to take the care. The logic is different when it comes to this part. How many times I will execute the main follow up? So n minus one time I will execute. So inside what is that I'm doing? So j is less than n minus i minus one. So this is the logic that you need to remember when it comes to the bubble sort. Okay. So j in the sense what? So why do I need i and j? So you will ask me, right? So guys, I need to compare with two uh, numbers, right? So for that reason, so guys, i and j. So i in the sense what? How many number of times, how many number of passes that it should run? So j in the sense one more variable which is working for comparison. 
so inner loop that's what you need to remember here so fine uh, so here what exactly happening so i'm just checking the condition observe here a of j is greater than a of j plus 1 so what exactly a of j and a of j plus 1 listen to me carefully now so guys this element uh, observe here what i have this a okay or uh, this array i'm treating it as a okay j in the sense i have the pointer j a of j in the sense 5 okay observe here my pointer is here a of j plus 1 okay in the sense what so here 1 so this is what you need to understand a of j in the sense this one a of j plus 1 in the sense this one so that's what you need to remember okay what is the condition that i'm checking if a of j is greater than a of j plus 1 so what exactly we are trying to do we are trying to swap the numbers okay so that is what we are trying to do here this is this is the logic to swap so how exactly we are swapping so i will create one variable called temp okay where it holds the value so what exactly it is holding whatever the value that i have in the a of j right now what i have so right now i have five so that value i'm going to store in this temp now okay then after that whatever the value that i have okay in the a of j plus one i will try to store it to the a of j remember that whatever i had it in the a of j plus one is going to a of j so what is the meaning of it sir so whatever i had it here so it is going to this place that's what you need to remember sir then where did phi go it is it is stored in the temp right now so that's what you need to remember cool then after that whatever i had it in the temp i i will bring it back to the j plus one j plus one in the sense what so j plus one in the sense this place temp whatever i had it in the temp so i will place it here that's what you need to remember all right so this is how the swapping is happening and then finally i will print after swapping so it is going inside the you know nested follow up and then once we are done with the sorting i will be printing all the elements whatever i have in the sorted array this is how the bubble sort is happening but when it comes to the sorting or especially bubble sort so these two follow ups are very very important so you need to observe i is less than n minus 1 the main follow-up should run how many number of times n minus one time and when it comes to the nested follow-up so n minus one the whole minus one n minus i minus one time it should run that's what you need to remember when it comes to the nested follow-up all right this is how uh, we need to understand the concept of bubble sort and some of the advantages that i have is all about bubble sort is a simple algorithm that sorts all the list of items in the memory and it is very easy to code right straightforward approach and there'll be a little memory of overhead so that's what uh, things that you need to remember with respect to the bubble sort moving forward to the next one that we have selection sort how exactly selection sort will happen so guys it's very simple you need to understand the concept very very important understanding the concept so guys observe here i have how many elements in the array i have four elements in the array so what happens here 30 and 20 so what i will be doing i will compare these two elements what i will be doing i'll be comparing these two elements so do i have uh, what should i do so i have 30 and 20 so when i compare so which one is greater observe here so i will just compare these two numbers which one is lesser i will bring it back to the left side i will perform the swapping operation so i'm Whenever you see this kind of diagram, you need to understand I'm performing the swapping. So these two numbers is getting swapped. So 20 is here, 30 is here. So fine. Then after that, so I will check this 20. Okay. I will check this 20 with 40. Okay. So there'll no there'll be no swap. I'll not be performing any swap because 20 is lesser than 40. Correct? So I don't have to perform any swap. But when it comes to 20 and 30, 10, so what is that I have to do? Should I swap or not? Yes, you have to swap. Swap in the sense, exchange the value. So fine, the 20 will uh, be going here and 10 will come here. This is how I will be swapping. All right, that's what you need to remember. And when it comes to the second pass, I'm done with the first element. Now I will be going to the second element, what I have. So I have to compare this second element with all the elements, right? 30 will be compared with 40. So there will be no change because... 30 is lesser than 40 cool 30 is compared with uh, 20 so obviously there should be a change because 20 is lesser than 30 so 20 will come here and 30 will go there swapping will happen then again i have finished the second element next i will be going for the third element so 30 will be compared with 40 all right so obviously 30 is lesser than 40 swap will happen so i got the swapped data
my array is sorted now. So guys, quickly, let me just bring it to your notice once again. So guys, what exactly is happening when it comes to the selection sort? So first, I will take this element, then I will compare it with each and every element. So that's what I'm trying to do. So whenever I find it, so the compared element is smaller than the element that I have. So I will per I'll perform the swapping. So that's what you need to remember. So first, what I'll be doing, I will compare this with 20. So is there any change? Do I need to swap? How do you get to know? So this element is less than this element. Yes, definitely you have to swap. Then after that, so guys, this element will be compared with next element what that is 40 so yes you don't have to swap again this element is compared with the last element yes do you need to swap yes because this element is lesser than this element so first position is done then i will go to the second position observe here okay once this position is done okay i will go to the third position once third position is done we are done Okay, so like this one one position, I will compare with all the elements what I have. This is how I will be performing the selection sort. So when it comes to the program, again, it is very simple. Rest everything is same what we did with the bubble sort. The only thing that you need to remember is n minus one and j is less than n. All right, so this is what you need to remember along with that. So guys, the condition is different here. A of i is greater than e of j okay so there e of j is greater than e of j plus 1 that is the condition that we were using but here e of i is greater than e of j we are using two pointers that's what you need to remember then you will be performing sorting so once this process completes so you will get the sorted array and you will be using this score to print the sorted array the only change that you need to remember is these two things and then all right so this line okay if you just remember this then you are done with the program. Simple, whatever, one program if you just learn and minute uh, changes you need to do according to the concept that you have. All right, with this, uh, I have the last topic for the day. Advantages, easy to implement, so same thing. And selection sort can also be used on the list structure that can make add and remove efficiently such as linked list. Okay, you can also do it with respect to the linked list. And selection sort is noted for simplicity. All right, it's very, very simple because each and every element is compared and the element is swapped is what you need to remember, okay? With respect to uh, two swappings or two uh, different types of sorts, what we have discussed here, I think you find it very simple and easy, okay? You need to remember the concept and you should be able to write the program. So with this, I've come to an end of the session. Thank you. Bye-bye.